Hi then, we're going to continue in the data engineering series. So today I'm going to demonstrate how to create big query data sets. I can create tables and ingest data into the table. Then I'm going to walk you through the IAM environment where to get the service account email and the service JSON file details we need to connect to the data set in the Microsoft Fabric data pipeline to orchestrate data movements to the Fabric Lake House for analysis. Let's get started. This is my console.cloud.google.com. So basically, I've got a project called Cornerstone IT Solutions. So the first thing I want to do is click on this navigation menu. And then I'm going to come at the bottom and I'm going to search for the BigQuery. So I'm going to scroll down and then we have the BigQuery. Click on that. And then I'm going to go to the BigQuery Studio. In the BigQuery Studio, I'm going to see the name of my project. I'm going to click on this vertical ellipsis. And I want to create a data set. Click on that. And I'm going to give this data set a meaningful name. Let's just call it Demo Sales. And I can specify the location. And of course, I'm going to stick with the multi region. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Create Data Set. So we have the Demo underscore Sales data set. So we want to create a table that's going to hold our data in the data set. So click on this ellipsis. And I want to click on Create Table. We can choose the create table from either from the Google Cloud storage or we can upload or we can get from our drive and so on. We want to upload a data set in a CSV file. Now, this is the data set. I've got all these columns, employee details. So I'm going to go ahead and browse through the location. So choose the upload. And then in the select file, I'm going to click on this browse. And this is the data set bigquerydata.csv. So we can specify the file for which is comma separate the value. And then we can choose the destination that is going to be landed in our project called the Cornerstone IT Solutions 1, which has been created initially. And then for the data set, that's going to be in the demo underscore sales data set we created. And then we can give this a meaningful name. Let's just call it um, sales data from BigQuery. You can give any one of the name you like. And then I'm going to scroll down. For the schema, we want to detect the schema automatically. So I'm going to check Auto Detect Schema. And then for the partitioning and cluster settings, that's going to be optional. So click on Create Table. OK, sales data from BigQuery has been created. So we can see the icon. And this is that's the icon. I can double click. And then I can see the schema. We have the columns. And then we have the data type, the string, date, float and integer and of course we have the mode nullable i can click on the details tab and i can check the details like the table information and the storage information i can even preview the data set click on this preview tab and then i can see the data set and of course i can go on and query the data set i can click on this ellipsis and then i can query click on this query and then i'm going to see the structure of select and i can put in the star here from so i can see the name of the data set demo underscore d sales and then we have the name of the table so let's say i want to select all of them so delete this and i can click on run and i can collapse this panel for now i can collapse this also so we have the data set and of course let's say we want to perform like update operation for instance i've got the gender column and we have F for female and M for male. So let's say I want to actually change these. I can use update operation. I'm going to type in update and I want to update the table sales data from BigQuery. Now, what is the name of that? So I'm going to type in demo underscore sales and then dot. Now, I'm going to see even in the IntelliSense that it's coming up. So I can select the name of the data set and the table and then I can go on and specify this set. So I want to set the gender to equal to inside single quote female and i want to use the where clause so where gender is equal to inside single quote f and then i can put in a semicolon and of course i'm going to put in a semicolon here to terminate this statement and i can go on and select and then run the query so that's has been modified. We have the statement to modify 18 rows in the sales data for BigQuery table. I can go back and run this select star from sales data from BigQuery. All right, so we have the females. Now we can do the same thing to re replace the male. So I'm just going to get rid of this and I'm going to type in male 
and then where the journal is equal to F. And then I can select query and then click on run. So this also worked. And then I can go on and select the original select star from sales data from query and then click on run. Okay, so we've transformed the gender column. So we have the male and the female. That is brilliant. Now we want to come to our Power BI app.powerbi.com, the Microsoft platform anyway, the fabric. Now, in this case, I've got this big query created, this workspace, and of course, we have no objects or no items. Now, I want to click on this new, and then I want to go to more options, and then I'm going to scroll down. I want to choose data pipeline. We want to actually perform data orchestration movement into the lake house from the big query. So, click on data pipeline. I'm going to call this transfer data from google big query and then i can go on and click on create in the build data pipeline we can go on and create our activity so i'm going to come to these activities and then i can use the copy data and then i can use the copy assistant but we want to go ahead and use add to canvas click on that and then we have the copy data and then we can give this a meaningful name let's just call this one um get data from google cloud big query and that should be fine so i want to come to the source now for the source it's going to be an external data store type so i'm going to choose the external and then for the connection i'm going to click on this nail i'm going to set for big query and then we have the google big query database click on that or double click it win and then we can give a meaningful details now of course i've done that before but i'm going to show you how to create the connection so i'm going to choose new connection and of course, make sure you have your data gateway already installed on your laptop. That is really important. So for the new connection, we can give this a meaningful name. Let's just call this, this my connection to so big query. So this is absolutely customizable. And then for the data gateway, I'm going to choose the cornerstone solutions gateway on my local laptop. And then for the authentication, can it's going to be service account login. This is where we need to provide the details like service account email and the service account JSON key file content. How do we get this? I'm going to come back to my BigQuery and I'm going to suspend what I'm doing here. I'm going to come or set for the IAM and press enter. So and I'm going to leave this environment and we want to go to the IAM and admin. So click on that. In the IAM, we want to come to service accounts. Click on service accounts and then of course, I've got one already, so we want to create a new one. So I'm going to click on create service account. I can give this a meaningful name. Let's just call it a um, demo. And then we're going to see the service account ID. And then we can specify the service account description. This is optional. Let's just call this one um, demo also. And then we can specify or click on create and continue. Now, we can grant this service account access to projects. So I can go on and specify a role. So let's say I want to come here. I can choose the basic and then I can specify the viewer. And this is going to be fine. Just click on continue. And then for the grant user access to this service account, of course, this is also optional. I can disregard and then click on done. So we're going to see the demo 902 at cornerstone it service and so on so i'm going to click on that to open it up so when i click on that i can see the details tab and then i can click on permissions now we will focus on the keys so i'm going to click on the keys tab now for now we have no keys so i'm going to click on add key and of course we can create new key click on that and of course, we can choose the key type, either the JavaScript object notation or P12. So this is the recommended the JSON. So click on create. And then we have the private key saved to my laptop. Now I can see it's been downloaded in form of a notepad. I'm going to double click to open the content. Now this actually looks so visible. It's really straightforward. So first, I need the service account email. So now this is where the service account email is. So I'm going to come here now. This, we're going to see this part, client email. So I'm going to copy everything inside this open and closing quotes. So copy everything. That's going to be my service email account. Control C to copy. And I'm going to come to fabric and control V to paste as my service account email. 
and then for the service account json key file content that's going to be the entire thing so i'm just going to press ctrl a to select ctrl c to copy and then i'm going to get back to the fabric and ctrl v to paste so i'm going to go ahead and click on create beautiful we have established connection to our bigquery now i can click on this test connection to double check and of course this must be a successful connection return for us a wonderful connection successful now i'm just going to wait for some couple of maybe one or two minutes because this can actually take some time so after we see the select i can click on the drawdown now i should be able to see the demo sales dot sales Data from BigQuery. And that's exactly, I'm going to just close this and let me go back to the BigQuery set for the BigQuery and press enter. And then I'm going to click on BigQuery and then I can click on the project, double click on project. And then I can see under the data set, we have the sales data from BigQuery table. So that's exactly the table we have in sales data from BigQuery. And that's working fine i can click on preview data to see the content okay we have the data preview so we're able to connect to our table which is quite brilliant i'm going to go ahead and close this and then that's done for the source and then for the destination now we can actually land internally or externally for example i can land this maybe in my adls gen 2 in sql server which i'm going to cover later on in the future but what else i can land in our workspace so i can choose the workspace data store type i can land in the lake house warehouse or a kisto query language database but let's focus on the lake house so i'm going to choose lake house as the data store type and then for the lake house i can go on and choose any but i can even go on and create a new lake house anyway let's just call this big query and then i can click on create the lake house okay that's been created automatically and of course for the root folder there's going to be in form of a table so in this case i've got no table in the new BigQuery lake house so i'm going to click on mail and of course let's just call this one sales data and then click on create table so we have the new table created and that's brilliant now for the mapping i'm just going to leave that aside for the settings that's not required so we've specified the source which is the big query and then the destination is going to be our link house which is brilliant and then we're done we can come to the run and then we can click on validate and then this should return no errors found which is quite brilliant and then I can click OK. And of course, we can schedule this project, this job, but we're just going to go ahead and run because we have few records, just 35 records. And then I can click on run, and then I can save and run. And then it's been saved, and then it's going to start running the project. So I'm just going to wait for maybe three minutes, and that should conclude the process. There we go. Activity status succeeded. Brilliant. So our pipeline run successfully now i can click on this activity name and then i can see to the right hand side the flow from our bigquery to our lakehouse so we have this source google bigquery version 2 and then flowing to our destination the lakehouse brilliant so we can see data read 4.04 kilobytes and then we have 35 rows and then we have the 35 rows written into our lakehouse brilliant and then we can see all other details like the status the start time activity run id throughput and so on so click on close brilliant now we want to come to our big query and of course we want to access the lakehouse so you can click on the lakehouse and then we're going to see the sales data table in form of delta table which is quite brilliant and of course we can go on and Query the data set, and of course, we can even build Power BI reports in the SQL analytics endpoints. Okay, so we have the data set now. I'm going to switch to the SQL analytics endpoints, and then we can query the data set. Let's just build a simple Power BI report. So, okay, so I can click on the new report, and then the table is selected, and of course, I can click on continue. All right, so we have the sales data table. Now let's just you know create a simple 
implicit measure. So let's say I want to see the department and I want to see by the pension. So I can drag the pension in there. And there we go. So we have the pension, the sum of pension by the department. So this is basically how we can connect to the BigQuery in the Google Cloud Platform to get data into our lake house using the data pipeline. I trust you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, share with your friends, comment, and follow me for more data engineering videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.